an opening day victory for the Firebirds. And here we are at Red Wilson Field in Yarmouth. Dennis, for today's game two matchup. Scotty Gange, I'll be your host for today's BBN Bird's Eye View pregame show alongside broadcaster Josh White. Josh, welcome in. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's talk about last night for a sec. Scotty, it was a great game last night in mm -hmm. Fort Orleans. And just the way that they had their pitching staff rolling from night one was incredible. Adam Simonaris out there on the mound, five shutout mm -hmm. innings. Just two hits allowed. Didn't walk anyone. Struck out two. 54 pitches. What more can you ask from a pitcher? And then they got a little offense in that second inning, too. Right. Josh Samore, first Cape Cod League at bat. Wasn't phased by the big lights. <laughs> crushed a 347-foot home run. And then the bullpen was great from there on out. Not too much offense to show for other than that. Rob Emery, the only multi-hit performance by a firebird. But the pitching was great. The bats were there. The defense was there. Pretty much about as good of a baseball game as you're going to get in two hours and five minutes. Can't ask for much more. <laughs> you're right on that. And it was a very quick game, of course. You know, the pitching staff was du was dueling and dealing all game long. Five innings, four seminaries, like you said. And the relieving crew was just unstoppable last night. Yeah, they were unstoppable. I think they had four innings of just one walk and, mm -hmm. like, another four strikeouts for themselves. So that's as good as it's going to get. Orleans' its first opening day victory since 2016. And they beat a good squad in Bourne that I know those were the two teams that finished last in 2018 but hey new rosters things change and Orleans is in first place right now of course one and all in the season you can't ask for much better than that especially in a point wise system like that so Orleans got the two points last night let's talk about tonight what can they do tonight against YD to get two more obviously YD is normally one of the better teams in the east and so is Orleans and if you look at last year just the way that YD played Orleans they really own that series they've won five consecutive games coming into tonight against the Firebirds but I think if we see a very similar performance from Orleans tonight, strong pitching, timely hitting. Should see the birds come out on top. Kelly Nicholson has struggled at times figuring out the puzzle of Scott Pickler, but you can never count out Skip. You, you, you really can't. And I know we're going to touch later in the show, the end of the show, when Thomas and Zarell is on here. We're going to go on the pitching matchups, but I know uh, Firebirds pitcher tonight, you know him very well. Let's, how about you shed some light on him? Yeah, Andrew Abbott, a rising junior from the University of Virginia, second summer in Orleans. He was fantastic. Last year, 1.74 ERA in 20 and two-thirds innings pitched. Mm -hmm. He was great at Virginia. He comes out of the bullpen for the Cavaliers, but he's a starter on the Cape. We'll probably see him for three or four starts this summer before going to Team USA to try out. He's a guy that sits fastball 91, 93, might touch 94, but it's the curveball that makes him such a dominant left-hander. 75-mile-an-hour curveball that just drops out of the zone. Going to keep hitters off balance all day long. Much shorter fences here today. We might see some Firebirds home runs. And if we do, then you're going to hear this guy's voice right here. Josh White, Thomas Cinzarella. Josh White, thanks so much for joining in. Of course. Thanks, Scotty. Let's have a great day, all right? Absolutely. My name is Zach Daniels. I play outfield. And a fun fact about me is I like Legos. <laughs> Welcome back into Bird's Eye View. Glad to have pitching coach Mr. Matt Troop. And in studio, I guess, our little outdoor studio here at Red mm -hmm. Wilson Field. Coach, last night, the story of the game was pitching and how phenomenal it was. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Um, Adam was... Absolutely on point. Um, I think I just crunched the numbers, actually. He ended up 78% strike percent. Um, <laughs> so he had command, like, I mean, to be quite honest with you, that I haven't seen in a very long time. Yeah. Uh, from the get-go, too, from the first inning all the way through the fifth. So it was uh, very fun to watch. Um, after that, the three relievers that came in, same thing, followed suit, uh, kept pounding the zone. We ended up with one walk on the whole game. So defense was always in it. Um, shout out to, to David, our catcher. Um, he was stealing some strikes all game for oh, us. Yeah. So that was, that was also <laughs> fun to watch and, and gave our staff a lot of confidence. Um, but, yeah, no, they did outstanding. Yeah, you mentioned David, and mm -hmm. I talked to Adam last night after the game, and I heard in their uh, in the bullpen before the game mm -hmm. he was kind of complimenting David. He was doing a good job spotting it up. It seems like he did that all, all night last night with, with Adam and then all the relievers as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's tough for our catchers. Um, and then David, because they, they haven't caught these guys. I mean, mm -hmm. when they're at school, they're catching their guys in bullpens and inner squads right. throughout the entire fall and season. Only and then three days to get ready. Correct, yeah. They're juniors. He's caught them for three years. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so coming out here, it was just we had a conversation. We all got together um, with Adam and David, and, and we got on the same page as far as, hey, what, what kind of looks does Adam want as far as setup? Like, hey, if you set up way in, my ball's going to, you know, run back over. Um, and, yeah, David caught on real quick, and Adam was, was really juiced about it. And like I said, he, he, he controlled all the pitchers really well all game. You know, there's so many pitchers on this year's staff, and I think mm -hmm. probably on purpose, because last yeah. year the Firebirds kind of ran out of pitchers at the end of the season. Right, you can never have too many pitchers. <laughs> How's the process for you on that, getting everybody their proper playing time, especially mm -hmm. when a guy like Adam is dealing through five innings? Um, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you, especially early in the season, all these yeah. guys are, are, are juiced to get up there and, 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 and get on onto the mound. But, you know, on my from my point of view, I love having all these pitchers, right? Because you never oh, run I, into I, that yeah. issue of, you know, I mean, Unfortunately, in the past, it's been issues where you have to start throwing position players, and <laughs> luckily, uh, the, you know, that Which shouldn't be. Which is fun for the viewer. It's fun for the it's viewer. It's fun for the viewer, <laughs> and I'm sure for the position player, yes, no doubt. 
Um, yeah, but you know that won't be an issue as far as uh, this summer goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's actually it's it's really kind of it's it's chill for our guys because they'll know exactly when they're throwing. I mean, the way that we're setting this up, um, you know, Adam who just threw last night, he has a legit seven days until his next start, so he wow, can yeah. he can plan that routine. And, and routine is so big and um, in a pitcher mindset to just you know that you did everything that you needed to do up until that point that you step on the rubber and you're just ready to rock. Right. So um, and then for our relievers, they know, hey, you know, you throw tonight like Pram and um, Benoit and Miller last night. Uh, they'll know today they have off, so they get yeah. to do whatever they need to do to, to recruit, recoup and be ready for tomorrow. And then those relievers that didn't through, throw will be up today. I saw Benoit um, in the gym today. He was just like, yeah, I'm not pitching tonight, so I'm doing some rehab. Oh, that, guy's, that guy's an animal, man. <laughs> he, he just towers. I mean, we, we have a staff out here that's – We weren't putting up the same weight at all, by the way. Oh, stop it. Come <laughs> on, man. Give yourself some credit. I'm sure you're putting up some weight. Um, but, yeah, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good – I see, I wouldn't even call it a problem, so I was about to say it's a very good problem. But, um, you know, I love the fact that we have 16. It's a luxury, it seems like. It is. It really is because I know some of these staffs out here are struggling right now, especially yeah. early when some guys are still playing, you know, going to Omaha or, or haven't made it um, right. to the kit quite yet. So uh, we're really excited to see everybody out there, man. Um, you know, if, if, if Abbott today is, is dealing, it's like, okay, we got to get him five <laughs> innings, and then uh, we'll figure it out from there. But – uh, very, very excited about the number of pitchers that we have this year. Yeah, and you've got to be excited for this year because you have been in their shoes before. You're a yeah. two-year Firebirds pitcher, and now here you are, what, six years later as six the Firebirds years. pitching coach. How cool is that for you? I've been counting that down for so long. I've been, <laughs> I've been bugging Kelly. Uh, you know, the past couple summers that I've been coaching, um, you know, since about 23 years old, it's been three years now, you know, every single right before summer, I'm like, hey, Skip, come on, come on, baby, take me, take me. I'm, I'm ready to coach. I'm ready to do whatever. Um, and it just so happened that this year there was an opening, and I'm able to be back uh, it, it truly feels like a, a second home to me I was here in 2012 and 13 so two yeah. summers so uh, you know all the host families are the same I get to see them the GM uh, people running our housing department so I, I'm very very happy to be back um, and yeah it, it feels like home I and heard it's beautiful out here I, I heard through the grapevine that you were called the mayor of Orleans while you were here yeah I was I, I may have came up with that nickname <laughs> on my own self-inflicted nickname no no <laughs> no it's, it sounds uh, good yeah I tell you I love it I love it um but this you know Orleans you know the Cape as a whole does a very good job I can't really speak on some of the other programs or, or mm -hmm. some of the other teams out here but Orleans does Your heart it is in Orleans oh dude they do it right they really make it feel like home you know kids coming from all over the country uh, they make it as easy as possible to just be able to come in here and, and do what all of these kids are trying to do, which is go to that next level, yeah. uh, get drafted and have an opportunity to play minor league baseball. And I'm blessed to be able to have this opportunity and, and now be able to come back out here and coach and learn from these guys just as much as, as they're learning from me. Man, if they take anything from me, I'm juiced, but I'm, I'm soaking up everything they're showing me as far as grips and all these different things, bouncing some ideas off each other. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy to be back, as you can tell. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I haven't stopped smiling. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm still running on some fumes as far as uh, travel. I took the red eye last night, two nights oh ago. So um, my eyes might be a little bit bloodshot right now <laughs> doing that. So I apologize uh, to the viewers. But it's, it's nice to be back. Coach, congratulations. Welcome home. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thanks for Thank joining you. us. Yep. Really do. Of course. Yes. Hey, my name is Donovan Benoit. I'm a right-handed pitcher from Santa Fe Community College, and you're watching the Birds Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. Welcome back into Birds Eye View. Scotty Gange, I'll be your host for today. And Mr. Alec Hendon, the team beat writer, a bit of an introduction to make. He's going to be coming on every single show with a scouting report. So we've got our special segment right in the middle of the show for Alec. He's the, the smartest guy here, far, oh, far, far smarter than me. So you're going to help us get, get an understanding of the team we're about to play. Alec, first off, thanks so much. And let's hear what, 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 what we're thinking today. Well, thanks so much, Scotty. I think you gave me way too much credit there, but I'll, I'll take a <laughs> little bit of it so obviously we're on the road today we're not at Eldridge we're here at Yarmouth and Dennis playing the Red Sox and in the past they've had the Firebirds number last year the Firebirds only went one in five including including losing the last five matchups and so Kelly Nicholson and boys I think they're definitely gonna want to get this one here today let's talk about pitching what, what do uh, the Red Sox bring to the table well they're starting today Ian Seymour he's a left-hander from Virginia Tech a lot similar to what we saw yesterday from Adam Seminaris mm -hmm. it's crafty lefty he's not gonna overpower you will fill up the strike zone, so I'm expecting the Firebirds bats to want to be aggressive and try to attack the strike zone early because like they saw yesterday, they didn't get much offense today, but they were lucky and they 
had some stellar pitching yesterday. Yeah, they really did. And last night, YD, they lost 4-3. to three. It seemed like their bats kind of just let go near the end of the game. What does their offense bring to the table, and what do we expect to see from them tonight on the other side? Well, they're definitely coming off a loss, and this is their home opener. And I'd mm -hmm. say one bat we need to watch out in particular is Jack Wold. He's their first baseman. He's from UNLV. Hit 331 in the collegiate regular season this year. Hit the first home run of the Cape League season yesterday. Hey. As they had the first game, they started at 3. They started a little earlier. Some of these fields don't have lights, so they have to play a little earlier. They played <laughs> against Brewster. But I definitely expect to watch. I'd want to watch his bat tonight because, as we can see, this is a smaller dimensional field. Even though the fence are a little high, it's uh, it's going to be a, more of a hitter's paradise in Eldridge and some of the other parks along the Cape. Alec, thanks so much. Some of the players to watch, you can see all of his postgame write-ups on OrleansFirebirds.com. Alec, appreciate you, man. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks, Scotty. Yes, sir. Inviting an enemy onto the Birds Broadcasting Network pregame show, Bird's Eye View, Mr. YD, TJ Matthewson. TJ, thanks so much, first off. Nice to be here, Scotty. <laughs> so you're going to help us kind of break down what the Red Sox are bringing to the table. You're, you're our in-studio expert. We just had Al Kendon. He kind of broke down what he's seen. But what did you see, especially from yesterday's game? Well, it really was kind of your prototypical early early season game. You know, these guys, a lot of these guys, a lot of 10 players, still getting used to seeing the higher right. velocity getting into the swing of wood bats again. And we saw a lot of that yesterday, only scoring in two separate innings. So Whitey had one in the fourth, Katua had two in the fourth, and then two apiece each in the seventh, uh, which ultimately led to the one-run difference, Katua over Whitey 4-3. Mm -hmm. um, pitching was pretty solid on both sides, especially at the end, Bo Hofstra and Kyle Nicholas uh, at the end for Katua really throwing gas out of the bullpen. And Whitey hitters were really struggling to adjust over those final, I believe it was two and a third innings. Uh, towards the end of the game, what really helped Katuit slam the door on the Red Sox. But, you know, they had some solid at-bats. Uh, Katuit did really well with some uh, small ball bunting whenever they get on in the late innings. Uh, it worked really effectively. And, you know, as the defense gets adjusts and gets used to playing with each other, I guess we'll see a little bit more fluidity on that. That 4-3 loss at Katuit. So tonight is your home opener. Does that change anything tonight? Well, it's, you know, a whole different ballpark. You got a really small park here at YD. You got 346 to right. 352 to center, and then 336 down the left field line. A lot for the guys to adjust to, especially the pitchers, to try and keep the ball out of the air, especially with the wind blowing out like it is tonight. It's blowing out to right field, so that is definitely something to look out for um, with that. I know there's a donut burger here at Red Wilson Field. Is that true? Boston cream one is the best. Boston cream Boston one. Should cream. I order that? I'm going to yes, order that. Yes, you should. I agree. I, I Personal, <laughs> personal vote of confidence to the Boston cream burger. It's absolutely spectacular. Don't be scared by the donut and a burger. It's it's a great combination. I have to ask, you're going to have 22 games here. Are you going to eat one every game? No, probably no, not. Okay. I'll be able to resist. I got, I'll got. i eat a couple. Fitness guy. I'll eat a, eh. <laughs> I like to think of a little bit of in between, but you know what? We'll do our best. Hey, TJ Matthewson, we're going to chat with him during the game in one of our mid-inning updates because he is the expert, as you can see. TJ, I appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks for letting me know, Scott. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Zach Acosta. I play outfield, and you're watching the Birds Broadcast Network. <laughs> my name is Max Troiani. I play the outfield, and I am terrified of clowns. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back into Birds Eye View, part of the Birds Broadcasting Network. Thomas Zinzarella, we saw Josh White earlier in the show. Thomas Zinzarella, of course, the other broadcaster for the Birds. Thomas, thanks for joining us in. And let's talk about tonight's game right before we're a few moments away from first pitch. Let's first off go on some expectations. What do we expect to see tonight? Well, I think we expect to be a really close battle again. You know, you get a lot of guys in the cave. They're pretty much all the same caliber. So every, every game's going to be inch by inch. Every inch counts uh, towards a victory. And I think tonight another, another close battle. Obviously, uh, the Firebirds luckily able to win a game yesterday. Now YD comes in, having dropped one last night in Katu. They're mm -hmm. a little hungry back to get some more. Um, and so I think we're going to see a closely contested battle. And hopefully the Firebirds, you know, the offense, seven hits yesterday. And hopefully maybe get a couple more, get a couple more runs on the board as well. Uh, the pitching was outstanding yesterday, mm -hmm. so I would expect to see uh, another strong uh, ace on the mound tonight, Andrew Abbott. So I would expect to see another uh, dominant Firebirds pitching performance tonight. Let's talk about him. What do you know about him? Well, made five starts on uh, for the Firebirds last summer, and uh, he was an absolute stud last year for Orleans. Uh, and unfortunately, the Firebirds couldn't pick up a lot of wins in his starts. Hopefully that will change this year. Right. Um, but he's a guy that, again, uh, just dominant on the mound when he was able to pitch. So... Uh, again, kind of key to yes, like on the broadcast you said with Seminaris, was throwing first pitch strikes can go a long way, especially here on the Cape. You see a lot of guys, they don't do that. They're going to struggle a little bit just because um, it's it's baseball. So, I mean, you you got to take advantage of when you can. So that's one thing to 
for a pitcher to work on is first pitch strikes. Abbott, one of the two Firebirds in uniform today that were on the team last year at some point. He played earlier in the season before he went off into do some Team USA work and all that, all that good stuff. But let's talk about the other team. We've got Ian Seymour on the bump. You know, uh, we've had a a Alec Hendon come in, and then our guy T.J. Matthewson of YD. They've kind of shed some light on on him. But what do you know about him, and what can the Firebirds expect to see from him tonight? Well, he's another ACC guy, so you got a little Virginia, Virginia Tech kind of matchup. A bit of a rivalry. So that is a rivalry in the state of Virginia <laughs> for sure. Of course. Uh, so I'm sure those guys might take it a little more personally, you know, knowing that they went to the opposite mm -hmm. school, but he's a strike thrower. Uh, his uh, case per nine, you know, in double digits, so he's pretty much going to do, I guess, you know, what Abbott and, and the Fiber told to do, and that's pound the zone and try to get ahead of hitters. And, you know, for, for hitters, it's going to be try to work the count, but, I mean, if these guys continue to pound the zone early and often, then it's going to be a tough night for hitters. Now, another uh, aspect, too, is the field for sure. For yeah. each pitcher, uh, obviously, why he's a little – a little bit of a different field. I have to call it the opposite of polo grounds. Polo grounds, an older type of baseball field, where center field is in the 380s. It's very shallow in center, but right field's down in the 330s and left field's uh, in the high 330s. So the right and left field lines really push down a little bit more, and then center field's a little bit shorter. So depending on the wind can go out, if the wind's going out, you know, in, in right and in left field, we might see some more offensive friendly, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a friendly park today. But we'll see, you know, which way is the wind blowing, and we'll see if, again, if those pitchers, you know, see more out of Virginia Tech and Abbott out of Virginia, if you can try to pound the zone early and just get ahead of counts. It, it makes your life so much easier on the Cape. You, know, you talk about the wind and something to note right now. The wind seems to be pushing in, and if you're uh, on the Cape today, you know that it's been raining all day long, so it's going to be interesting to see with the thin air how, how far the balls go. And for, for last thing for you, in terms of expectations, the Firebirds were phenomenal last night pitching. They had solid hitting, but not amazing. They got the two runs off the jo Josh Josh Zamora hit, excuse me. What can they do better tonight on the offensive side? Well, I'm sure Kelly's just going to try to preach that. You know, uh, the some of the approaches for some of the fiber just do. You know, I really like their approaches, and uh, some of the hits didn't fall their way. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Kelly's just going to tell them to keep battling. You know, you can hear from the dugout yesterday uh, to keep working the counts and uh, just trying to find a way on base. And again, a lot of it's just timely hitting as well. You just need to score the guys when you can. The fibers didn't leave uh, that many guys uh, on base, left five on base yesterday. So they did a good job of that. They just, you know, there wasn't a lot of big innings chances they could have gotten uh, anymore, but you know sometimes a guy needs to step up and just short a swing up and just try to put a ball in play. Putting the ball in play, we're gonna have to see if that happens today. Did not happen last night as it was a pitcher's duel, but you know every single game in the Cape is just so much different. You're about to hear this guy's voice. It sounds great today. I'll tell you what, it sounds great. You're about to hear his voice on our YouTube live stream. Be on the lookout for that. And Thomas, thanks so much. And hey, let's get to some baseball, all right? For sure, Scotty, go Birds. <laughs> YD Birds coming up here on YouTube Live. I'm Trevor Johnson, I play outfield, and this is the Birds Broadcasting Network.